word processing, internet, drawing, music making applications. Um, there's a video camera and video editing. There is, what else is there? There's a, there's a, a built-in oscilloscope, which you can turn into like an EKG heart monitor or anything else or, a, you know, alarm systems so in your, in, you know, if you don't, don't want to make, want to see who's going where. Um, there are lots of different programming environments. One programming environment is really simple uh, and you snap together commands sort of like Lego pieces. It's called uh, Turtle and it was originally written in, in the 60s by um, sort of one of the, the fathers of this project, Seymour Papert, who, who's studied with Piaget and came up with really pushing forward the idea that the computer is the most powerful um, technology of our time and we should we should use it with children and this idea of constructionist learning learning by doing is a very powerful way of learning so he wrote in the 60s a, a computer language for children <laughs> which if you think about the 60s I mean computers were the size of the you know bigger than the room that we're in right now and uh, you know people thought why are you doing this for six-year-old kids but you know ultimately now his this this sort of vision he had in the 60s is finally being realized They'll, they'll be smaller and lower cost, but 10 years, 10 years out, that, that's, it, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I, I guess it, the really crazy ideas that I've been thinking about, I don't know when they'll, they, I can get them to work, but there's two ideas, especially if you sort of think that the computer can fit, you know, in your cell phone or smaller, in your pocket, it's a chip or something, but you need some way to see what's on there in some way to input. And input maybe can be voice or maybe it'll be touch, but why don't we just have like a can of, of, of spray display and you can spray it on any surface, right? And then you can beam to it the information that, that, that's, that's in your you know, cell phone-like device so you can see it really big and then after two hours or something it evaporates and um, eats carbon dioxide, for example. That's one kind of idea, but that's, you know, 20, 50 years out, and here, it's sort of funny for me to sort of put that forward, because what I contended with the OLPC laptop is, you know, rather than inventing a new kind of technology, how do we use the existing manufacturing processes as is, no changes, no, no process changes, no material changes, but really conceptually different to get the thing out and shipping as quickly as possible, and I think it's a lot easier than, you know, creating new things, although I, I like to do both, um, and people do work on both. And the, the problem in my industry, in the display industry in particular, is that it usually takes more than 20 years to develop a new display technology, and then usually the incumbent technology is still better. <laughs> it's the window of opportunity. It's too expensive, and it gets shut down after a couple billion dollars is spent. And so what we're trying to do is say, you know, it's sort of like in silicon, the Everybody uses about the same general process in silicon. It's something called CMOS, complementary metal oxide semiconductor. But you know, the people, people, Silicon Valley, silicon chip designers design a chip and they send a file to the factory and back come chips. And they don't change the molecules. They don't, they don't change the processes. And it works pretty well. And they can do pretty innovative things with chips. And I'm trying to do that with screens. It's very safe, and and you can design a new screen in. Well, I designed the XO, the, the XO screen, the screen in the XO laptop went from specification to mass production ready in six months. And it's half the cost of a screen when adjusted by area, about 3% the power consumption, five times the resolution, sunlight readable, and, and you can make it and you can make lots of them. So that's really cool. But here's the other crazy idea is um, why don't we put like for the screen, for the computer, like we really want to... Well, one thing, we want to get our thoughts out, and maybe a really good way to dump our thoughts is some of the deep wire electrodes in our brains coupled with like a skull cap where you can beam like the images <laughs> you see to the spray paint on the wall or just any screen. Doing things like that would be really cool, and I think that there are suggestions um, in, in the literature that show that that these type of things are possible if you look at what happens in, in the, the LGN, which is um, 
thought to be an early processing part of, of, of the human visual system before it goes to the back of your brain where the whole thing gets, gets mapped. But it's, the images are a little bit jumbled there. But you can, if you've got a really, if you, you know, if you witness like a, you know, a murder or something, something horrible, um, it's, you feel like these images of, of, of extreme things you've witnessed are, are almost burnt into your retina. And there's suggestions that show that um, that's actually in your LGN, and you might be able to extract it. Very, very crazy idea. But that's like a 50-year-out idea. Right now, I'm sticking to the um, sort of standard manufacturing processes and innovating in 12 to 24-month cycles because I just want to ship stuff and change the opportunities for children rather than, than, than really focusing on the basic research. Mm -hmm.